James Ibori robbed Nigerian state funds of untold fortunes. But he started out here, in Rislip, West London, working as a cashier in a hardware store. He was sacked for allowing his wife to take £200 worth of DIY material without paying. The following year, James Ibori was arrested again, this time for using a stolen credit card. So he now had two convictions for dishonesty and was facing county court judgments for debt. It was 1991 and James Ibori fled back to Nigeria. He was broke and at rock bottom. Yet by the end of the decade, James Ibori had managed to become one of the richest and most important rulers in all Africa. The Niger Delta should be one of the most prosperous regions on Earth. It produces billions of pounds worth of oil. While the people live in poverty, the riches are skimmed off for the elite. James Ibori fell in with Nigeria's military rulers and became governor of Delta State. His salary was just $25,000, but as leader of the elite, he was soon a wealthy man. Nuhu Ribadu set up Nigeria's anti-corruption squad. His prime target was James Ibori. It was very clear that he was very, very rich. And he was buying companies all over. He had aeroplanes and he had properties in South Africa, in, in the UK, in the US and so on and so forth. What's more, he was offering huge bribes. He gave me uh, 15 million US dollars in cash. 15 million? 15 million cash in sack, big sack and... How big is a sack with 15 million dollars? A big one, a huge one. How could you resist the temptation? There's no difference between a hundred dollars and ten million dollars or fifty million dollars, as long as it is a proceed that is... Uh, you have it was not wrong. ...genuinely earn it and mm. it's not yours and uh, especially an individual who is fighting corruption. <laughs> While in office, governors in Nigeria are immune from prosecution. But at the end of Ibori's term, he was charged with corruption. This is one of the interrogation rooms where Nigeria's politically exposed people, governors accused of corruption, have been brought. And for much of the last 10 years, the man who's been directing those interrogations and investigations is Ibrahim Lamorde. Is there any member? His biggest challenge, James Ibori. We left him for last because we knew uh, uh, he had a lot of influence. But I think we also underestimated what was coming after his arrest. Ibori faced 170 charges and all were dismissed by a court in Delta State. A devastating blow for Nigeria's anti-corruption squad. Um, my life. Meanwhile, Nuhu uh, Rabadu's anti-corruption work had amassed too many enemies. They tried to kill him. But, you know, to my shock and surprise, I just saw a pistol. The car was bulletproof. It needed to be. And the next thing was... On a country road, he was ambushed. And it is a very solid bulletproof. After a second attempt on his life, Ribadu went into exile, leaving behind a political class that was rotten, none more than James Ibori. It was a, a product of this completely, you know, corrupt system, and he became like the star of the whole thing. And he was so rich and powerful. <laughs> With corruption thwarting justice inside Nigeria, 3,000 miles away, there was a breakthrough. Investigators had been following the activities of the bent African politicians, and in particular, of James Ibori. You can see huge amounts of money being transacted, transfers coming in from Nigerian companies, huge amounts of cash being paid into those accounts, and they also live an absolutely extortionate lifestyle. I mean, there was uh, $180,000 per month being spent on a credit card, which Ibori, Mr. Ribori was using, a, a Centurion credit card. Every month? Every month. What was he buying? Well, he was spending money like water. One example, he should have been in Poland for a trip uh, on behalf of his state for 16 days. He spent two days there. He flew back into London and then, and then flew off to Miami and Las Vegas for the other 14 days. He was obviously bringing large amounts of cash with him on the flights. He was flying in out of London like nobody's business. Both, all the governors were. 
Ibori's £5 million house in Hampstead is now up for sale. Then there's his apartment in Abbey Road, his country pile in Dorset, and various properties around the globe. He also has luxury cars on three continents, private schools for his children, and tens of millions in assets still to be traced. For the key to it all, laundering his stolen cash, he had a bent London solicitor. The lawyer's name was Badresh Gohill, and he worked for a firm in Mayfair. The law firm, who were unaware of Gohill's crimes, had offices here, across from the Ritz. They don't say who their clients are, but we know Gohill did work for a former president of Zambia, who was himself accused of gross corruption. More significantly, we know Gohill helped James Abori launder his millions. And for that crime, Gohill had particular expertise. Gohill was the money laundering reporting officer for his company, so if there was any suspicions around any of the accounts, uh, from members of staff, for example, they'd have to go to him. He's the compliance man? That's absolutely correct, yeah. When the police raided Gohill's office, they found plans mapping out money laundering scams, all designed to hide Ibori's funds. They were all there on computer hard drives, hidden behind a fireplace. One scam described the $5 million deposit for the purchase of Ibori's latest toy, a $20 million private jet. It went via two accounts in Switzerland. Uh, it went to, from accounts in Mauritius, uh, Germany, uh, Luxembourg, um, Nigeria on four or five occasions. It goes back to Nigeria? It goes back and forth. We even had a company that um, was incorporated in, in a place called Nuri in Polynesia. Ibori's wife, his mistress and his sister have already been jailed for money laundering, along with Gohill, who got seven years. Ibori himself will be sentenced tomorrow.